Hello everyone. So welcome to my playlist on functions of several variables. So today we are going to see the geometrical meaning or the geometrical interpretation of partial derivative with respect to x and partial derivative with respect to y. So when you have a function in several variable and if you do this partial derivatives at a point, you get a number. Now the question is what does that number represents? Okay, so that's what I'm going to tell you. First we will try to imagine over here and through the hands and we'll try to visualize it. If you cannot visualize it, don't worry. At the end, I will also take the help of GeoGebra in using the software. I will try to explain you its geometrical meaning. So we will see both the ways. So be patient and enjoy the lecture. Okay, so before going towards the notion of partial derivative, I should make sure the notion of derivative is clear. Notion as in one should know that how this limit force the secant line to become the tangent line. Only that one thing I want to tell you. So if you have a function from R to R, we saw in our previous session that if you try to draw the graph of this function, the graph will be a subset of R2. So this is your R2 and suppose this is the graph of that function, some function. Now what is the derivative at point A? It is the limit of this ratio. Okay. And when you solve this, you get a number. What does that number represent? It is the slope of the tangent line. Okay. Now how it is coming out to be geometrically? So if this is my point A, what will be this point? This point is P. So if this is A, let me call this as f of A. So what is my P point? P point is nothing but A comma f of A. How does the graph points looks like? Input comma output. If this is my A plus H, let me call this point as Q and this will be my f of A plus H. So what will be my Q point? It will be nothing but A plus H comma f of A plus H. So this is my P, this is my Q. Now what you do is you draw the line joining these two points which we also call as a secant line. So you draw the line joining the points P and Q. Now what is the slope of this line? You know how to find the slope y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So f of a plus h minus f of a upon a plus h minus a. So what you get is f of a plus h minus f of a upon when you do this subtraction a goes away you only get h. So this ratio, this ratio is nothing but the slope of this secant line. Now as my h goes to 0, where your a plus h will approach, it will approach to a because h is approaching 0, so this will approach towards a and as this approach towards a, your q point, as this will approach towards a, your q point, so your secant line will become like this, your secant line will become like this, your p is fixed, your q is moving, right? So your q is what? Your q is approaching towards the point p. Ultimately, this secant line becomes the tangent line and this is the slope and this limit forces the secant line to become the tangent line therefore ultimately this is nothing but the slope of the tangent line. So what does the limit do? It takes the secant line to become a tangent line and you get the derivative. Now this was for one variable. Now let's go for higher variable that means if you have a function from R2 to R. In that scenario, where will be your graph? We saw previously that our graph will be a surface. Okay. Now when you have a surface in R3, what will be the tangent line? That is the question. Okay. Now for that you imagine, suppose you have some surface for the simplicity, let's imagine a football over here. Suppose you have a football over here. You take the topmost point or mathematically, let's take a spear. So you take the topmost point over here. Now to this point over here on which is on this football, this is the topmost point. Now at this point, this line is the tangent line, right? This line is a tangent line. Even this line is the tangent line. Even this line, even this line. So you have infinitely many tangent lines and all these tangent lines will form a plane, which we, which we call as a tangent plane. So, so when you have a surface and you have a point on that surface, then what you get is you get a tangent plane. What you get is a tangent plane. This plane is a tangent to this point and this plane consists of infinitely many lines and those are nothing but the tangent lines. Hence you have infinitely many slopes and we categorize these slopes into three parts. First is partial derivative with respect to x, one is partial derivative with respect to y and one is the directional derivative. So today we will see with respect to x and with respect to y. Okay, now what is the definition? Let's see the definition first. So you take a point in R2. Now I want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point AB. Now when you are differentiating with respect to x, you keep your y component as constant. So if you see over here, your y component is fixed. And there is an increment in only x component because we are differentiating with respect to x. 
So this is a formula for partial derivative with respect to x. Now when you solve this, this will also give you a number. Now what does this number represent? This number is again a slope. It's a slope of the tangent line which is along the x-axis. Now let me explain that first. This is the plane I have. Okay, so visual, imagine this is a plane. This in between there's the origin. This is my positive z-axis. At the bottom it's a negative z-axis. Here is the x-axis. So this is the origin if you imagine this. Positive x-axis, negative x-axis, positive y-axis, towards me negative y axis and this is z axis okay now suppose you take a point a comma b so you take a point on the surface a comma b which i took over here okay now this is my z axis now imagine you have a surface over here you have a surface over here since a function is from r2 to r the surface or the graph will lie in r3 now this is a point a comma b its image on z axis will be f of a comma b okay so what will be the graph point it will be a comma b comma f of a b and let me call that point as the point P. So what is my point P? So this is my point P. Okay, so you have a surface over here. You take a point on that surface. How that will look like? A comma B comma F of AB. Okay, now since I'm differentiating with respect to X, my Y component is fixed. So what is Y equal to B represents? So Y equal to B is nothing but a plane, right? What is the intersection of a surface and a plane? You had a surface, you are cutting it with the plane Y equal to B. So what will be the intersection? It will be that curve, single curve, because the intersection of a plane and the surface. So this was the surface. You are cutting it with a plane. You are getting a curve over here. Now on that curve, you have a point P, which is A comma B comma F of AB. Now just keep this in mind. This is the curve you have. Okay, now this is A comma B. Now you consider another point Q. So now what to do is there's an increment in X component. So if this is A comma B, Suppose this point is a plus h comma b. Okay, it will be on the same line because my height is fixed, b is fixed. So now this is the point p, a comma b comma f of a b because a b the projection is a b over here. My here it is a plus h comma b. So suppose the point q is over here. It is on the curve only. So this is the curve and this is my point q. So how my point q will look like a plus h comma b comma f of a plus h comma b input comma output. Now you have these two points, you draw the line joining P and Q. So what was my Q point? This was my Q point. Now my Y component is fixed. So you ignore this. You find the slope of the line joining P and Q. So what is this formula? F of A plus H comma B minus F of AB, which is my numerator, Z2 minus Z1 upon X2 minus X1. So A plus H minus A is nothing but H. So this fraction or this ratio is nothing but the slope of the line joining the points P and Q. Where are these points? These points are lying on the plane as well as on the surface. Which plane? Y equal to B plane. Which surface? Your Z equal to F of XY. So this is the point P and Q and you have the ratio. Now as your H goes to zero, your A plus H comma B will approach towards AB. And when this is happening, my P is fixed. And this Q, which was the secant line, this will becoming a tangent line. So this will become a tangent line. So ultimately, this is nothing but the slope of the tangent line. Which tangent line? The tangent line, which is along X axis. So this gives you the slope of the tangent line, which is along the X axis. Similarly, what will be my partial derivative with respect to Y? When you're differentiating with respect to Y, you will keep your X component as fixed and there will be an increment in the Y component. And this will give you the slope of the tangent line along x axis. So this was the surface. Now my x equal to a is fixed. What is x equal to a? This was my x axis. This is my x equal to a plane. So now I will. So this was the surface and this is the plane. So I will get a curve over here because this is the plane and this is the surface. So intersection will be over here. And now if my p is a comma b comma f of a b, my q will lie along this curve. And then you find the slope of the line and then you take the limiting case, you get the slope of the tangent line which is along x axis. So when you have a surface, so if I want to summarize this, on a surface if you take a point, on that point you have infinitely many tangent lines, you have infinitely many slopes. We categorize the slopes into three parts, partial derivative with respect to x, slope of the tangent line along x axis, partial derivative with respect to y, that means slope of the tangent line along y axis 
and if i want to go into any other direction then there is a notion of directional derivative that we will see later so i hope the notion is clear now let me explain you using geogebra so that the picture will be more clear to you okay now let's see using geogebra now you go to this 3d calculator how to go through the how to go to 3d calculator you go to the geogebra website and then at this square you click on the 3d calculator now once you reach here you will see this xyz plane okay so now red positive is positive x axis this is red negative is negative x axis green positive is positive y axis this is green negative is negative y axis blue positive z axis blue negative is also z axis negative z axis okay now first of all you consider a surface so if i define a function f of xy as sin x and if you type and enter this you can do this if you wish i'm just i have just typed out everything so that i will consume less time of yours so f of x y sin x so this is the surface i have okay now you take a point on this surface so let p equal to 1 comma 3 comma what is my function either you can type f of 1 comma 3 or you can type sin 1 both is fine so you can see the point p over here if you don't like the colors no problem you can go to this Three, do three dots click on the settings you go to color and then you choose whichever color you want to play with okay so okay i'm happy with this color so you can see this black color dot over here or a gray, col gray color dot it is in the first octant i will say because x y z everything is positive okay now here i am i want to differentiate with respect to x that means my y component is constant so what is my y over here three so if what is my y equal to three as i told you it's a plane so y equal to 3 is a plane over here right so this is the plane you get now as you can see what is the intersection of the plane and the surface as you can see it is nothing but it's nothing but a curve so as you can see this is a curve over here if you can't see exactly you can do this curve u comma 3 comma sin u and you can give a range for u so as you can see this black represents a curve which is the intersection of a plane and the surface and the point p is lying on that surface okay as well as on the plane okay that was one thing now once you have a point p what was the next thing we did we constructed the point q which was nothing but a plus h okay instead of h i have used c over here so a plus h comma b comma f of a plus h comma b right so that was our q point and i am giving this c as a parameter so you plot this q point over here so and once you plot this q point you can draw a line joining the point p and q so let me click this so you get a line joining the p and q and actually they are nearby uh, let me increase the c yeah so as you can see my c is 2.3 so i have p i have q and i have the line line joining them now if you find the slope of this line which is z2 minus z1 upon x2 minus x1 you get that ratio and as my c will go towards zero the secant line will become a tangent line and you will get the slope of this tangent line which tangent line the tangent line which is along the x-axis because there's an increment in x component there is no increment in y component and if you want to make a slider out of this you can make a slider as well so this was my a plus h and as so this is my maximum is what my maximum is 5 and as my h will approach towards 0 or you can say your c approach towards 0 line will approach towards the point p I mean it will approach towards and you get a tangent line over here and ultimately you get the slope of this tangent line same thing you can do with partial derivative with respect to x y when you do that partial derivative with respect to y you, now in this case what will be that plane that plane will be your x equal to 1 so when you type x equal to 1 you get x equal to 1 plane as you can see this is the plane x equal to 1 and now we have to make the corresponding changes over here so it was u comma 3 comma sin u and now it will be so now this is the curve you have you take x equal to 1 and your sin 1 you have and your y component is changing right so this is the intersection the line the intersection of a plane and the curve now you have this intersection now you plot a point which is my point p over here and now you take a point q over here now here also you need to make a change now my there's an increment in my y component okay there is no increment in my x component so therefore here you will have only one and you have sine one and now when you plot this as you can see actually it's a line only so the point q will go on the line along okay so for a line the tangent line is the line itself so when you do this you get the 
tangent slope of this tangent line which is along y axis so now whatever surface you like you just plot the surf you just write down the function you get a surface you take this points you draw the line you draw the curve which will, which is the intersection curve and that will give you the slope of that respective tangent line so i hope you understood this lecture if yes do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you